Greetings and welcome to the international version of Smartwatch Ticks. Saludos y bienvenidos a las garrapatas de Smartwatch, donde vamos a echar un vistazo detallado a la nueva aplicación de traducción en el periodo de la linfa o L. Yeah. Siete oh. Smart Watch. That, okay, you done? Okay. <laughs> We are having so much fun. This is, of course, you should recognize it by now, the Limfo LEM7 Android 7 smartwatch, 16 gigabytes of onboard storage, and this whole new translation app built into it. Let's listen to that in real-time Espanol. By the way, I'm hooked to an external... Saludos y bienvenidos a las garrapatas de Smartwatch, donde vamos a echar un vistazo detallado a la nueva aplicación de traducción en el periodo de la linfa o L. Eh, M7 Smartwatch. Is that it? Okay, good. <laughs> My Spanish is so old. I'm, I'm a, a Bluetooth tethered to this external uh, speaker thingy majigger here. Uh, so first of all, Nice, it, it can do the Bluetooth tethering. Imagine that you had an earpiece in your ear and uh, you're able to do what you're about to see because you certainly can. And toward, <laughs> come back here. Toward the end, I'm gonna talk to you a little bit about that tethering idea. Wow, we've, um, we've spent a lot of time with this watch. I guess I'll leave that in the corner so you can see it. Uh, and, and I got a few things to tell you. First of all, a, a tip, an important tip. The charging dock, you know, this LEM7 comes with a charging dock that uh, is also your data transfer dock. And something critical you need to know, the wire, the wire that came in the box, the sacred wire, and nothing special about it from a viewpoint, but I tell you, you need this particular wire for this thing to work plugging in here and plugging it into your computer if you're going to do um, data transfer directly through USB. Uh, I've tried it with just regular old USB to micro USB wires and it will not hook up. It needed the one from the box. Now, there may be other special data capable ones that you got with your phone. I know my LG uh, G3 phone had a special wire that would work and it works with this. So it's a unique special kind of data capable uh, wire that you, you need. Oh, there, good, we brought up the keyboard. That's what it looks like uh, on the watch when you have the keyboard, which is okay to type on, but a little bit, I mean, it's your standard keyboard. Doesn't have the microphone on it, mind you, but it does have all of the, um, the keys here. Uh, English or Chinese, you switch it to, make sure you're in English, and you've got your number pad and symbols and stuff. But I digress, because I was talking about the biggest tip you need to know. Don't lose or exchange your charging wire for any other wire if you plan to hook this thing up to a computer to transfer data. Okay, what we're doing now. Oh, oh yeah, and another thing, as I get back out of here, you noticed, um, Maybe a video was missing from the LEM7 series, and I just want to say, wow, you guys are great. Wow. Uh, I, th I think I graduated from uh, YouTuber to um, media influencer because of you. Um, there's no need to keep it up, and there's some back things happening that required it to come down, but uh, we were talking about some of the limitations of this watch, and let me just say we got folks' attention. And thank goodness that a lot of the stuff that happens on these watches is done through firmware updates because there's some serious work going on now to improve the capabilities of this watch that have been uh, illuminated, so to speak, um, through various means, especially through your guys' comments and direct contacts uh, with, with those that uh, um, needed to know. So... Yeah, that video's gone, and this one's coming up. And this is all about translation when you go into the app drawer. Oh, yeah! I wanted to show you this, too. First of all, let me dim this down a little bit. There's the lowest level. I mean, you can see that at night, but wow, it's really dim. It's great for night viewing. 
There's the medium level. You know, I don't have the display brightness thing going on on here now. Wow, did you see? look at that? Is that showing up on yours? Whoa. It's the simple pleasures in life, you know? Look at that. <laughs> anyway, uh, that's the middle level, which is just about right for shooting video, and that is just way too bright. But you know, you can pretty well see this watch outdoors in the sunlight if you shade it. Nice. Okay. But we're going to go at the middle level. And uh, one of the concerns was there's this big black bezel around the outside. And if you, if you look hard enough, you can find some watch faces that take advantage of that, like this one. Look at the rings and look how it's been spaced in such a way that the bezel to the ring, to the ring, to the center, give you a nice looking little watch face. So I'm suggesting that as much as we all don't like those big black bezels, there are ways of dealing with it that um, it may work for you. Works for me. There's so much to this watch that the bezel is just kind of eh. They'll fix it in another watch someday, but for now, this is what we've got, Android 7, and it's got this translator thing in here. When you go to your app drawer and you tap on it, and I'm in the square, you know, you can press and hold, and you can go here to the circle, and you can have the whole thing fill the screen. It's just a little easier to navigate what I'm going to show you in the square, so I'm going to go back there. You have really two input ways of working with translation. All right, you got three, because there's three things here. You've got a keyboard. If you bring that up and you type in what you want, notice it says it's English to Spanish, and the typing is right on top of the translation information. Um, so that's a bit of a problem. It's not that great to try to do it by text. You probably can, but I don't think they really expected you to, nor do, do I really, Don. There we go. Um, whatever you put there, there's a little speaker, and if you hit the speaker, it's going to attempt to translate it, and of course, it's going to have trouble doing it, because that's just gobbledygook. <laughs> you betcha. That's in Espanol. We have a whole bunch of different languages. We'll get to that, too. And because we were in the typing mode, the keyboard is here to bring back up to, um, to do some more. And then there's these other symbols. However, if I get back here, I have a microphone and I have two people. With the microphone, you can do voice input. You've preset this now to the language translation that you want. I've got these three dots here. When I do this, I can go into settings, offline languages, uh-huh, feedback and help, recommended this app, and about. And if I go into settings, you can... Have it to automatically speak the translation. Translate profanity? Woo! Not on this channel. But if you want those expletives, anything but deleted, arave, hoody hoo, you can do it, I guess. Um, text to speech voice. And you heard the guy. Let's go with the, the lady uh, for future things we're going to do here. You can change the voice. You can clear your overall history. And you can update offline languages as they perfect them, right? Okay, now, that's everything here in settings. Uh, when we go into this little, what looks like a book here, you have a phrase book. And they've preceded it with little things like, hello, goodbye, please, thank you. And uh, down here is your translation stuff. Uh, where you have the different languages and English is available. And here are all the other languages. Let's get this in focus because I know you guys are interested to see if your particular language is represented. There's quite a few different ones. Chinese simplified, traditional. Look at all of this. Check. There's English again. Estonian. Wow. Greek, Hebrew, Hindi, look at that, Japanese, Korean, we may need that in the future to try to listen to the, uh, the grand uh, meetings coming up and maybe actually listen to the languages directly if we can put this on the TV and translate it on the fly, who knows. Um, wow, more and more stuff. 
Nice. There's Spanish, Swedish. My goodness, Thai. Wow. Okay. So we have all these translate to, translate from. Okay. And I've picked Spanish because, you know, back in high school when I was a senior, I shouldn't be telling this, I had one year of Spanish from Mr. Garcia, who really liked to mess with young teenage boys and girls. And, oh, he would foam at the mouth when he would do his translation. It was quite an experience. And it led me actually to follow a path of engineering rather than physics, because physics required two years of a foreign language, probably Latin. I had my fill of... Anyway, now I've got a translator, and I don't have to worry about speaking it uh, because it's going to take care of it for me. Enough said. Now check this out. I've turned Wi-Fi off and I have cellular data on. 3G data is what it says I'm getting and I only got two bars here. Now it's down to one bar. But nonetheless, I go into translator and I can speak. What time is it right now? Question mark. There it interpreted. You hear that? A little slower. Press it two times. Once it'll play it again. Press it. Oh, oh. Now, now after I played it a second time, see it got the little box there and I play it once more. It's half speed. Yeah. Okay. Want to hear it again half speed? It'll it'll do it if you press it again. Takes it a while though. It's again sending it off. Ahora es ahora mismo interrogante. Wow, okay, it slowed it down even more. Each time it seems it's sending it off to the server to interpret, translate, and come back. And it's doing that over cellular data right now. If I like that little question, I can pin it right here. I can send it out over the, you know, various means of sending it, email or whatever. And this little box, I'm not sure. I tap that and it goes green like that. And then I have a play button. And it takes me back here. So not sure what we're supposed to do with that. Okay, it's going to get more fun. That's the overall voice input and how you play it back and how you pin the comment. And now next to the microphone, you see two microphones. Let's say you got this on your arm and you're out with, uh, with people on the street and you need to ask some questions. You can do this. Ah, sorry, didn't want to go there. You can do this. Press that button, you get two microphones. This is for you. This is for them in their language. And you've already got it preset for the languages you're using, right? So you tap here and speak and it'll speak back. They tap here and speak and it'll speak back in your language, in English in this case. And if they're like opposite you and not standing right beside you, shoulder to shoulder, you can click that button and reverse the microphone. And now your arm is right between them. You talk, they talk. You talk, they talk. Either you can control it or they can touch the button as well and you can have all kinds of fun translating back and forth, not just one way. Really, really sweet. Now, when we get in another watch that has translator built into it, and I'm pretty sure the uh, Z-Blaze Thor 4, which is really, really close, if not identical to this, will have this feature. We'll come back and try this one. Because here you can join a conversation. You do something, you can start a conversation and you get this whole barcode thing going. Uh, enter your name and select a language and so forth. Your language is English. And you go through this and you scan barcodes and do this stuff. And now you have a, a conversation and you don't need to be in each other's physical space to do translation. You translate to them. They translate to you. Is it over Bluetooth? Wi-Fi? NFC? Psychic? I don't know. We haven't gotten there yet. I only have one watch right now. But I can tell you there's some growth area that we can test in this whole translation built around conversations. Pretty cool, right? 
Thanks, Google. Your translators. What? It's not Google? It's not? Who is it? Um, well, let's see if we can find out. That's the phrase book. That's the history button. Tells you uh, what your recent questions and translations were in little groupings. Okay, see that? And if you had any pinned ones, which we did over here, there they are. And I'm pretty sure you can just tap it and it should play from, from your history, from what you had already asked. Uh, lots and lots of fun stuff going on there, but that's not it. When you get back out to here, and we come into here, and we go into about, you can rate it, you got legal privacy, third-party notifications, and all sorts of stuff. Rate and review, that probably pops you over to the Google Play Store, you think? Let's see. Uh-huh. Guess what? If it's in the Google Play Store, you can probably download it and play with it and get used to it on your phone. Or maybe even, wow, that's intense, isn't it? Maybe even on another Android watch you own. Why not give it a try? It's hardwired in this one as a core app. And look who's doing it. It's Microsoft Translator. Hey, I've even got an update for it. Wow. All right. So where we started to talk about the fancy um, language translator app that built into the Limfo LEM7, we're coming away with the realization that it's a standard app available in the Google Play Store for free by Microsoft. All those languages in there are Microsoft's version of it. You have 16 gigabytes of space in here. So you can go into the um, offline uh, mode if you want to. I don't know. It's in here someplace else, right? Uh, anyway, you saw that. You can go into offline languages. You can click uh, an, a language that you're going to be using regularly and download the megabytes worth of it into the watch. It already has English installed. And from there, theoretically, although it didn't work for me, but theoretically, maybe I need to do the update. Theoretically, uh, offline, without it being on Wi-Fi or cellular, you should be able to use the translation system directly. I'm going to put myself back on Wi-Fi. All that you saw me do was over cellular, and I only had one to two bars of AT&T. So we've got a slick little thing here. Hope I perked your interest back again in the Limfo LEM7. We've done a good uh, overall review of it. We've talked about the, uh, the fitness and a bit about biometrics, and that's not the forte of this watch. This is not really a sports watch. It's the first attempt to put this stuff in here. Um, that's all I can say. But if you want it for a good Android watch with a nice smooth uh, scrolling bar, all your stock apps, and the ability to put in all kinds of other ones from the Google Play Store, and this new um, translator system that's built into it, then check it out in the show notes down below. We have got a nice buying link for you, and you could pick it up, like right now. All right. Gracias por ver Garrapatas Reloj Inteligente. Espero que suscribirse y volveremos a ver muy pronto. One of our good friends in the watch business has moved into the wireless earphone business and as you just saw we can bluetooth tether watches to earphones and with translation it's a perfect match so come on back we're going to talk about these and we're going to go into some of the details that's involved with tethering bluetooth ear devices to smart watches